Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will discuss about Medox Rod. And I will proceed with this lecture in following sequence. First, I will describe definition of Medox Rod. Then uses followed by optics principle procedure and interpretation of its results so this will be the sequence of uh, today's lecture for definition the dog's rod is composed of series of plano convex cylinders and these plano convex cylinders are arranged sideways side by side they are arranged side by side This is how a Medox rod looks like. Here you can see the lines. These are uh, lines showing individual cylinders that are uh, arranged side by side. And these are plano convex cylinders and these are of high power cylinders. So this is the definition of Medox rod. Number two is uses. It is used to measure. horizontal, vertical and torsional deviation. This instrument is used to measure all these three deviations, horizontal, isotropia or exotropia, vertical, hypertropia, hypotropia and torsional, and torsion and extorsion. And uh, these deviations measured by Medox rod are small deviations. It is used to measure small deviations. You cannot measure larger deviations with Medox rod. So this is a limitation of Medox rod. And mainly you can uh, find out Fourier's latent deviation from this uh, Medox rod. And uh, you cannot use Medox rod for accommodative deviations because this uh, instrument cannot uh, control the accommodation of the eye. Next is the optics. Understanding its optics is very important to able to understand the procedure and results of uh, Medox rod. So let's start with the optics. So as mentioned in the definition, it consists of plano lenses and uh, we know that in cylindrical lens we have axis, meridian and power meridian. We will focus on both these meridians. That is what will happen when light rays pass through the axis meridian of the Medox rod and what will happen when the light rays pass through the power meridian of Medox rod. First we will study what happens when the light ray pass through the axis meridian of the Medox rod. Let's suppose Medox rod is placed in this fashion. The axis of individual cylinders is at 90 degree. So when light pass through the Medox rod we know that axis meridian has no power so they pass through the Medox rod undeviated and they come towards the eye and the eye using its reflective power makes a point image 
of the light source on the retina. Okay, the object here in this medox rod is light source. Similarly, from the next individual cylinder, again light rays come and they go undeviated, and then I make a point image of this light source. Again, from the next individual cylinder, light rays go undeviated and focus on the retina of the patient. So here you can see that individual foci are being formed and this is perceived by the patient as a continuous line. Okay, We can see this concept here, light source passing through this cylinder and a point image is formed on the retina, point image is formed on the retina from this center, this, 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 and the patient interpret it as a complete horizontal line. So an important point here is that when Medox rod held vertical, the light image formed, the line image formed will be horizontal. Similarly, when Medox rod held horizontal axis meridian on 80 degree then a vertical line image will be formed. Now let us see what happens when it pass through the power meridian of the medox rod. Let's suppose this is the eye of the patient, here is medox rod, light rays are coming and these light rays are oriented at 180 degree. Okay, because when held perpendicular, when in held at vertical angle, the power meridian lies at 180 degree meridian. And uh, we know that power meridian has power, and these are high convex cylinders, so it will form a real image between medox rod and the eye of the patient. Each individual cylinder will make a real image between medox rod and the patient. Now this real image is so close to the eye that it takes that, that a distinct image cannot be formed by the eye. And as a result, this light diverges and just eliminates the retina of the patient in this fashion. So Patient cannot see anything from this meridian, 180 degree power meridian. The next is the principle of the Medox rod. Medox rod is based on the principle of dissociation of eyes. Okay, you dissociate both eyes so that any deviation, whether manifest or latent, can become visible. So its principle is dissociation of eyes. And how dissociation is achieved? We will put medox rod in front of one eye and a patient views a light source. The light source uh, will be converted into line image by the medox rod. So this eye in front of which medox rod is placed will see a line image and the other eye, the naked eye, will see a point image of the light source. So, dissociation is achieved. One, uh, one eye receives the line image and one eye receives a uh, light source, point light source image. So, eyes are dissociated. Okay. So, this is the principle of uh, Medox rod. Let's discuss it a little bit more. This is the right eye of the patient and this is left eye of the patient and the patient views a light source. So here the dog's rod is held vertical. So this eye sees a horizontal line image while this eye will see a point light source image. So two different images are uh, visible to the eye so the eyes are dissociated. Similarly, if medox rod is held in this fashion, that is horizontal, 
then a vertical line image will be formed and a point light source image will be formed by the other eye. So to test uh, horizontal deviations that is isotropy and exotropia I need this point light source image a vertical line image okay and for this the dog's rod must be held horizontal so it is easy to understand to measure horizontal deviations you have to place the dog's rod in a horizontal position the axis of individual cylinders must be at 180 degree and similarly to measure vertical deviations hypertropia hypotropia you need to place uh, the dog's rod vertically the axis of individual cylinders must be in a vertical uh, orientation 90 degree and to measure torsional deviations you cannot use a single medox rod you have to use a procedure known as double medox rod which we will discuss in next coming video the next is procedure of uh, doing medox rod number one is it can be performed at 6 meter and also at near at 33 centimeter it depends upon the examiner whether he wants to measure at a distance or near in both these cases the target is a light source then you will place my dog's rod in front of one eye the placement of my dog's rod will depend upon which type of deviations you want to measure if you want to measure vertical deviation you have to uh, place my dog's rod in vertical orientation and if you want to measure horizontal deviation uh, you have to you have place my dog's rod horizontally we will discuss both these cases for horizontal deviation you have to place my dog's rod horizontally for vertical you have to place my dog's rod vertically so here we understand it through a diagram I want to measure horizontal deviation so I will place my dog's rod horizontally in front of one eye other eye is naked and the patient views a light source that's for that 6 meter so these horizontal placed cylinders of the medox rod will make a vertical line image and the other eye will make a point image of the light source so two images are formed and uh, if the patient has a normal retinal correspondence and there is no deviation either manifest or latent then he will uh, report you as something like that a line image in which center is a bright point light source image something like that if this is the case it means that there is no deviation in the eye this is something you label as normal and one more thing the dog's rod are available in different colors usually we use a red color so patient can report you at a red line and then in between is a white light source okay uh, let's discuss about deviations from isotropia or exotropia in isotropia we know that diplopia is uncrossed uncrossed diplopia and in exotropia we have a crossed diplopia okay so if patient reports that he is seeing a line and a dot this is with respect to the patient he will say that on the right side there is a line and there is a dot on the left side in a similar fashion to the way we have given him the exposure that means he is seeing a line in front of the eye making a line image and a dot in front of the eye making the dot image so this diplopia is uncrossed so you will label it as 
isophoria because mainly we are measuring uh, latent deviations and if he says that he is seeing something like that dot on the right side and line on the left side so here you can see that these thing, images are shifted line which was supposed to be at the right side is seen by the patient on the left side and dot which was on the left side is seen by the patient on the right side so here you, you are seeing a cross diplopia which means that this is exophoria so this description of the patient indicates exophoria and this description indicates isophoria this description indicates orthophoria so this was about horizontal deviation now let us discuss vertical deviations for vertical deviation I will place my dog's rod vertically these are two eyes of patient and my dog's rod is placed vertical it means that a horizontal animation will be formed so if the patient is normal he will report something like that there is a horizontal line in which there is a central point image of the light source it means that there is no vertical deviation but if he reports like that there is a line image below and a point light source image above in this fashion this will indicate right hyperphoria right hyperphoria also means left hypophoria and if he says that line is above and dot is below so that indicates hypophoria right hypophoria or left hyper so this is how you perform redox rod and how you interpret its result. In the definition, we have said that it is used to measure the deviation. Okay, but here we are talking about only deviations, we are not talking about measurements. To measure deviations, we use prisms. Prisms are placed in such a way that the apex of prism is in the direction of deviation. In this case, it was right hyperphoria, which means you will use prism in front of the right eye with base down. And you will gradually increase the power of prism until the patient reports this. This is a line image with a central dot point image. That will indicate that now the eye is at its normal position and the amount of prismatic power used will indicate the deviation of uh, eye in the right eye similarly for this you will place prism base up in front of the right eye and continue increasing its power until this is achieved and for uh, horizontal deviations like this uh, an example of exophoria for exophoria you will place prism base in and increasing power till this situation is achieved and then you can write the power of prism used to obtain this and uh, that is your horizontal deviation and in case of isophoria you will place prisms base out so this is how you can measure deviation using Medoff's rod so the lecture about Medox rod is complete. Thank you.